Okay, let's start with a, a quick review of what you've learned already. So have a go at the 10 questions, pause the video, have a go at the 10 questions and then check your answers in five seconds time. All right, so mark your, mark your answers. If you're not doing very well with a particular topic, go on to Brainscape and study that particular topic until you know it inside out. So we're going to have a look at something called the cardiac cycle. We've learned about previously the, the structure of the heart and, and how the blood flows through the heart. And it's got a very specific route through the heart. So we're gonna have a look at how that's actually controlled uh, in terms of the cardiac cycle. So pause the video, have a look at the key learning points uh, so you know what to look out for. So the cardiac cycle is, is really the, the pattern of contraction and relaxation that, that takes place in one heartbeat. Um, so when we're talking about contraction, we use the term systole. And when we're talking about relaxation, we use the term diastole. And if you take a look at the diagram at the bottom, you can see that we have a cardiac cycle which lasts 0 0.8 seconds. And there are different things happening at different parts of that, that cycle. So there are three main stages that we're going to look at. There's 0 to 0 0.1 which is described as atrial systole. There's 0 0.1 seconds to 0 0.4 seconds, which is described as ventricular systole. And then there's 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 seconds, and that's described as diastole. So we're gonna have a look in a little bit more detail at each of these three stages. First of all, if you know what the length of a cardiac cycle is, you can calculate a person's heart rate. So this is one cardiac cycle, zero all the way through to 0 0.8. So just less than a second. So if you divide 60 seconds by uh, the length of the cardiac cycle, in this case, 0 0.8, then you can calculate the heart rate of the individual. So just in a bit more detail, we're going to have a look, first of all, at 0 to 0 0.1, which is atrial systole or contraction of the atria. So pause the video, have a look at the diagram and have a think about those, those three questions. What do you think is happening? So let's see if you are correct. So during atrial systole, the top two chambers of the heart, the muscle, the walls of those chambers contracts. And that causes the pressure in the atria to increase. And when the pressure in the atria becomes greater than the pressure down in the ventricles, it forces open the valves between the atria and the ventricles. And what that means is that the blood that has been filling up in the atria is able to move down into the ventricles. Whilst that's happening, you can see that the, the valves between the ventricles and the arteries, the semilunar valves, they're closed at this stage. So the blood is moving down from the, from the um, atria down into the ventricles, the bottom chambers. So that was the first stage, 0 to 0 0.1, atrial systole, contraction of the atria, forcing blood from the atria down through the AV valves into the ventricles. Pause the video, have a think what happens during the second stage. Okay, so are you correct? So the ventricles contract this time. So this is called ventricular systole. So as the ventricles contract, the atria are now relaxed. So as the ventricles contract, the pressure in the ventricles goes up, it increases, 
and and when the pressure in the ventricles becomes greater than that in the in the atria, the AV valves will close. The pressure will keep on increasing, and when the pressure in the ventricles becomes greater than the pressure in the ar arteries, that forces open the semilunar valves, and the blood is forced out of the ventricles and up and away through uh, the arteries, either to the lungs, if it's the pulmonary artery, or the rest of the body, if it's the aorta. Have a look at the third stage, diastole. Have a think what happens during this stage. So during diastole, both the atria and the ventricles are relaxing. Neither are contracting. And so blood is flowing back into the heart during this phase. So it's trickling back uh, in the veins, into the atria, into the top two chambers of the heart. And actually some of the blood will trickle down into the ventricles at this stage. The, the AV valves are open, but the semilunar valves are, are closed at this stage. So just to review, Atrial systole, the atria contract, pressure increases in the atria. When it's greater in the atria than the ventricle, then the, the blood starts to be forced down from the atria to the ventricle. The ventricles are relaxed during atrial systole. Second stage, so 0 0.1 to about 0 0.4 seconds, the ventricles now start to contract or undergo systole, the atria relax or diastole, and the pressure increases in the ventricles, the AV valves close, the semilunar valves open, and the blood flows up and away through the arteries. 0 0.4 seconds to 0 0.8 seconds, atria and ventricles are relaxing, they're undergoing diastole, and blood will trickle back into the atria and some of the blood will trickle down into the ventricles. And then once that happens, the whole process starts all over again. So if we go back to the diagram, at the end of 0.8 seconds, we go back to the start and atrial systole will start again. Atrial systole, ventricular systole, diastole. Atrial systole, ventricular systole, diastole. And that happens hopefully for about 85 years. Just having a look at, at this diagram, it's, it's, it's awful, it's a horrendous diagram, but it's just showing really the pressures in three main areas. You need to really understand uh, how the pressure changes in these areas and how it affects the valves opening and closing. So what we've got is we've got this line here. If we just follow it, it shoots up there. And that's the pressure inside the left ventricle. Okay, so here we go at zero, you can see that the pressure inside the ventricle is actually lower than the pressure inside the atria, the left atria. But at 0 0.1 seconds, you can see that, that at that point, just after 0 0.1 seconds, the pressure inside the ventricle is now greater than the pressure inside the atria. And it's at that point there, because the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the pressure in the atria, that forces the AV valves closed. The pressure inside the ventricle continues increasing until eventually the pressure inside the ventricle becomes greater than the pressure inside the artery, in this case, the aorta. So that forces open the semilunar valves and that causes the blood to flow out from the ventricles up and away through the aorta. So that pressure rise and carries on until eventually it starts to, to go down. So we're about 0.4 seconds now within the cardiac cycle. So we're moving into diastole, relaxation. 
and the blood pressure inside the ventricle begins to drop until event at this point here, the pressure inside the ventricle becomes lower than the pressure inside the aorta. And so the semilunar valves close. It carries on dropping the pressure in the ventricle. And eventually at this point here, the pressure inside the ventricle is now lower than the pressure in the atria. So the higher pressure in the atria forces open the AV valves between the atria and the ventricle. Pause the video, have a look at the diagram, rewind the video, listen to the description again, pause the video, have a look at the diagram, rewind the video, listen to the explanation again. Um, it's not easy, but keep having a look and keep trying to understand how the pressure change affects the valves opening and closing. You can pause the video again and have a read through this slide. I'm not going to read through it, but, but basically the closing of the valves brings about the heart sound. So when you listen to a heartbeat, if you like, through a, using a, a stethoscope, you can hear the closing of the AV valves here at this point, and you can hear the closing of the semilunar valves at this point here. So the closing of those valves creates a lub dub sound, lub dub sound, and that's the sound of the heartbeat. So pause the video, it's quite a lot of tricky stuff in there. Have a look at the key learning points um, and, and think carefully what your specific questions are for your teacher.